Okay, we are, yay, we made it. We did it live, our third presentation. Okay, so we're gonna take a tiny little break now that we're actually streaming and we're gonna go live in a couple moments, but we're gonna get all set up okay. and get the presentation ready. Okay, so now we're getting all set up here for our presentation. And we have our third presentation of the afternoon or late morning with our class. I'm so excited we made this happen because we were not able to post, we're not able to um, do the YouTube live for the first two. So now we're able to finally do it. It took a lot of uh, trial and error some technical difficulties but here we are once again um my name is becky and i have been working with this wonderful class at psu pacific states university on real estate 500 is what it's called and it's fundamentals of real estate including market economics and um we just completed two presentations one was um, the real estate analytics for the pandemic market. And the second presentation was the international market um, versus the local market and what some of the differences were. And we talked about uh, Japan, Thailand, US, uh, Australia, Canada. So super fascinating and I'll post those later. And the final presentation for this afternoon is um, three lovely ladies here. But I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. But the third presentation is about the difference between the Great Resignation, which is today, and the Great Recession. So I will be sharing our screen here with their presentation. And then I will allow them to take over and present their topics here. So you guys should be able to present from here. If one of you want to hang out at the podium. Do you have a, do you want to try the clicker and see if it works? Yes. So we will be getting a little set up here. Present. There we go. Oops. We can just sit here and just go back. I like this guy. She's looking out the icon.
No, it's, it's not finished. Yet. Yeah, we were having it again. Okay. The keyboard. Well, how about we don't use the clicker? Maybe we can just use, I'll just sit. Yeah, or I can click for you. Because I can't, oh, here. Oh, wait, there we go. The keyboard cannot be identified. Please press the key immediately to the right of the shift key. Is it this one or are you using? Are you guys okay just using the laptop to yeah. click through? So we just sit here. I can do it. You can just tell me to go next um, if you want. It's because uh, some of them are really short. Oh, okay. So, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Well, just, oh, yeah. just go for it because it's already live. And um, you guys just can breeze through it. There we go. And if you sit right behind the podium, and you can tell me next slide, and then I will make a note. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I know. Or do you want me to go? Why aren't you showing up behind oh, the podium? Showing. I thought we were live streaming. <laughs> Is it picture? This is really funny. I was. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, because how come you're not? This is very weird. So when I left, uh huh. It just showed this one. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you can. Um, I could hear you first. Well, maybe it's just the screen. It's not showing up. So if you want to, let's just go through it. If it's just showing the screen, that's okay. Show the screen. Oh, do we? Yeah, uh, let's go for it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Angela, and I'm here with my classmates, Tian and Rudolph. Um, today, we're going to present on certain periods in the history of California's real estate market, as well as in the neighborhood. Next slide. Oh, man, the keyboard's not working. Yeah. So we had to go back. Okay, perfect. Here we go. Um, so uh, our presentation will consist of four parts. Uh, we will first cover the peak of California's real estate market, which took place after the 2000 recession, and then get into the great recession of 2000. And we'll then cover the current market in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And then we'll conclude with some takeaways and presentations. Next slide. Uh, 
to start off, uh, I will cover the period after the 2001 recession, specifically the years between 2003 and 2005. So looking at this graph, um, we saw that California's monthly home sales volume reached its peak in June 2004, and we decided to investigate further. So during this period, uh, 2004 was a, was a third year, a third consecutive year that in, uh, home prices in Southern California broke records. Uh, monthly home sales reached 76,700 and prices soared 23% from the previous year, 2003. And we were able to discover that uh, different factors um, helped contribute to the strong demand for housing during this time. So there are some significant factors during this period nationwide. So, um, these uh, factors include political, economic, as well as uh, employment and population. So diving into the political environment, um, Alan Greenspan was the chairman of the Federal Reserve during this period. Uh, he uh, became chairman in 2000. Um, so following the 9-11, terrorist attacks, uh, the federal funds rate dropped uh, to 3% and then continued to drop to 1% in 2004. Um, Greenspan was known to keep uh, interest rates low during the early 2000s and was also known to suggest homeowners consider taking out uh, adjustable rate mortgages. So another factor to consider is the economic environment. So in the first quarter of 2004, uh, the U.S. economy grew at an annual rate of 4.2 percent, and military spending was also high during this time. Um, it actually made a significant contribution um, to the economy since the Iraq War. Simultaneously, the Burrell Bureau of Economic Analysis reported that business investment was strong, and with low interest rates and inflation rates, um, consumer, consumers had higher spending. So employment levels um, was also uh, facing recovery in the last quarter of 2003, as you can see in the right part of the graph. So the US workforce was showing signs of recovery after the 1990 dot-com bubble and the 2000 recession. And throughout this period, employment in California also increased by 105 Previous? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All good. Yeah. Uh, employment in California increased by 105,000, which is about 0.7%. Okay. So there was also an increase in population levels. Um, the Pacific region had an estimated population of more than 45 million, and uh, California accounted for two thirds of the population growth within this region. So combining all of these factors I've mentioned, um, you can conclude that uh, they uh, all supported the strong levels of home sales. So uh, this period was a seller's market and it was a very attractive market for agents to enter into. According to the California Department of Real Estate, the number of licensees increased to 11% per month between the years 2003 and 2004. And there were a total of about 394 licensees by the end of mid-2004 and was um, projected to increase by 31,000 the following year. Um, so there were more sales uh, during the summer months during this time and less sales uh, during the winter months, but how, like, the, the home sales were still reaching records. So just to share some statistics. So these statistics were published by the California Association of Realtors back in 2004. So 2004 was a record year for home sales and it was projected to increase 3% from um, 2003's uh, sales figures. So un unsold inventory index reached a historic monthly low of 1.5 months in April 2004. The median number of days it took to sell a single family home was at, at an annual average of 29 days. Um, 
the housing affordability index also fell to 19% in May 2004. And also the gap between um, the affordability index in California and the nation reached uh, 26%, which was considered an all time annual high in 2004. So the fixed rate mortgage average was 5.8% and this rate was actually considered low during this time period so it was historical for back in 2004 and it helped sustain the seller's market so southern california saw one of the sharpest increases in home prices uh, medium prices in this region increased by 23 percent to 395,000. dollars so here are some, some examples um, to show the increase in home prices. So these are a few counties in Southern California. As you can see, uh, the median uh, was 23%, but actually uh, Riverside County saw the sharpest increase um, in home prices at 28%. So some key points, um, after the 2001 recession, the US economy was reco recovering at a fast rate. Um, with low interest rates and inflation rates, consumers had higher spending power and can maybe uh, suggest why there was an unleashed, uh, why it unleashed a uh, buying frenzy. Um, California also saw one of the sharpest increases in home prices within the nation, and those um, prices rose above 20%. We can also conclude that the political and economic environment of the U.S during this period led to a I'll now pass it on to Kian. We'll cover the Great Recession in 2008. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. You want me to handle the... Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Or you can do it. Oh, yeah. whatever you want. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, hi, everyone. I'm going to present on the 2008 Great Recession, following up on Angela's um, presentation on the post-2001 period, ranging until 2005. So I'm going to analyze the 2006 up till 2009 area where the housing bubble bursted and caused the financial crisis, or as we know as the 2008 Great Recession. So uh, during 2006, we started to see the signs of market slowdown. Um, subprime mortgages right now, the at the time, the subprime mortgage rate was increasingly high. I'm showing you right now the subprime mortgage chart which shows from 1996 up until 2008, where its peak is between the period of 2004 up to 2006, which the highest was 23.5% <clears throat> during 2006. It was the peak of the housing bubble before it bursted and it moves down to, well, actually, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the lowest, um, it was missing from the screen. But the lowest was 1.7% subprime mortgage rate, uh, subprime share of the entire mortgage market, actually, uh, in 2008, which you can see uh, subprime mortgage is basically like it's cheap credit loaning. So basically everybody can own a house, um, even though their credit score, it's not high and it in involves a lot of credit risk to it. So after the housing bubble burst it, um, this uh, declines deeply. And I'm also showing you this credit risk chart with three indicators, um, TED spread, Liberate. Um, as you can see, this is the credit risk uh, level from 2006 up until 2008, the first quarter, it was remained high in the United States for the credit risk until it was realized that the housing bubble and the subprime mortgage uh, industry is getting into is its peak, and then uh, it's getting increasingly like dangerous for the market. 
That's why it has a huge drop, as you can see from July 2007 and January 2008. So by the end of, uh, actually by the third quarter of 2006, we see very clear the market slow down with flat home prices, home sales fall and inventory build up. And by the end of 2006, it was recorded uh, roughly 1,260,000 foreclosures. This is the US foreclosure market report for 2006. As you can see, the total uh, out of 1,259,000 for the United States, California foreclosure for 2006 was 142,000, which is increasingly, you know, it's a, uh, which is considerably high compared to other states. This is around 11% of the entire US uh, real estate market. So you can see that California was more greatly affected by the subprime mortgage crash and the home sales and foreclosure than other states. So 2007, this is, um, this marks the first year over year decline in housing price index. I'm going to show you this is the chart from Fred. This is the all transaction housing price index for the for period from 2005 to around 2009. So as you can see, its peak is around quarter first quarter of 2007, with housing prices reach. Um, uh, national average 380,000 and then it uh, declines from there and you can see the period of the financial recession 2008 2009 it declines more drastical than other uh, time periods comparing that United States to that of California you see that California have similar patterns but uh, however I believe that the house price started to fall in California earlier than that of the whole United States, which uh, started, which peaked around the third quarter of 2006 instead of first quarter 2007. Um, but this, you also have to take into consideration the house price in California is in more high, the higher than comparing to national average. It's almost twofold that of the national average. So this kind of explains the effect on the California real estate market. It can be more serious than that of uh, the United States as a whole. So um, 2007, it's also the year of the official subprime mortgage collapse due to um, fear of inflation. So the government decided to adjust the mortgage rate into higher mortgage rate. That's why a lot of subprime lenders, they're unable to pay off their homes, which also can be shown in one, it's 127% household debt to annual disposable income. And by the end of 2007, you see um, the foreclosures amount have reached to 2 million and 3,000. So 2008, it's the um, beginning of financial crisis after the burst of the housing bubble. 2008, we saw the foreclosures of 3,100,000 and the largest drop in wholesales for 25 years. So the foreclosures already in increased almost 82% comparing to that amount of 2007. Um, and also we see the huge drop in homes, home sales and household debt reach 14.5 million. Um, I'm also showing you the household debt to GDP for the United States. This is the chart, chart also from Fed. And um, you can see that it keeps increasing from 2005 up until 2008. Uh, and its peak is during the 2008 beginning of financial crisis, which the household debt to GDP for the United States as a whole reached 100% level. And it fluctuated around that area until the second quarter of 2009, until it finally cools down later on. 
but this basically means that um, so household debt is almost all of um, a household disposable income, which uh, also can be explained by um, other economic factors, including I'm showing you the real GDP per capita. And due to a, a massive decline in the GDP per capita, as you can see from 2008 up until 2009, it can be explained, uh, it can be used to explain the rising in the household debt to GDP for the United States. Um, so um, due to a large amount of defaults, Due to subprime mortgage collapse, uh, the housing inventory compounded and kept increasing. This is the housing inventory invest uh, estimate for the whole United States. However, if you compare this chart to this housing inventory estimate for owner occupied housing units in the United States, you will see instead of a, um, an increase, you see a decline in the owner occupied housing, uh, housing units. This is because of the large defaults rate, which cause uh, a lot of inventories are, hold, are being held by banks and um, banks are holding like trillions of dollars in worthless inventory, worthless investment. That's why the inventory go up, but the owner occupied housing units actually decline. So this period is the shift from the seller's market to buyer's market. So uh, first of all, uh, I'm, talking, I'm gonna talk about the push. So around 2006, competition and tempting opportunities pushed the number of licenses up um, since 2003 up until 2006 period. This is the chart for California active real estate brokers and agents. As you can see, it's very clear from this chart that from 2002, 2003, up until 2007, the uh, numbers of active agents and active brokers increase very steadily. And um, it was, the ratio was 2.7 agents per active broker. This is, um, only during an inflation market, which is already shown the potential of a housing bubble burst. So um, it finally happened during 2007. Uh, so number of licensees has decreased from 260,000 to 220,000 uh, in 2010. So I'm uh, actually showing you the graph again. So um, from 2006 up until 2010, it was it kept decreasing until its reach is uh, bottom. So this is kind of in a down lag uh, situation during uh, and up until 2014, where it finally uh, re recovered. Um, this is the buyer's market as the total number of new agents has dropped dramatically from 2004 to 2007. Uh, there was recorded 5,000 licensed agents per month. However, um, from 2007 to 2012, it was only around 1,000 licensed agents monthly. So other uh, factors can be taken into account is seasonality. As usual, we see like sales activity more active uh, during the summer months. And that, that was like the um, other uh, elements, but it was not, it should not be considered like noises because it, uh, it also contributes a lot to the change in the real estate market. So uh, another factor that should be considered uh, with the decline in the agents, the number of agents and brokers is the unemployment level. So I'm showing uh, this graph of unemployment level for California uh, during the period of 2007 to up till 2010. 
the unemployment level for California um, specifically and the United States as a whole increased um, from almost 1 million uh, people recorded up until 2 million and 200,000. So this can be uh, also be used to explain the decline in the real estate brokers and agents. So um, right now I'm going to transfer to Wu Zhang. She's going to talk about the 2001 pandemic. Thank you, Hien. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Wu Zhang, and I'll cover the current real estate market during the COVID-19 pandemic. Early in 2020, COVID-19 pandemic hit the world and has been impacting all the industries, including the real estate market. To jump into conclusion first, home prices have reached one of the highest points as of now. This could reflect the increased demand, reduced supply, or the mixture of both. On demand side, um, due to the pandemic, families had to spend more time and even work at home. New features are one is such as spaces for additional purposes or big yards. For example, some may not own locations where public transportation is nearby anymore. Moreover, low mortgage rates encouraged an increase in home prices as well. On supply side, homeowners could be reluctant to list their homes for sale during the pandemic. Um, new homes were not built because the industry was on hold during COVID-19. Various, oh. as mentioned, the home prices have skyrocketed during the pandemic. If you look at 2020 to the most recent, the prices rapidly increased after the outbreak of COVID. Various factors are affecting the housing prices and we'll cover the details one by one. The graph is showing unsold inventory index in California. And if you look at 2020, um, it significantly dropped after COVID and now remains around two months. And it tells us that California has been seller's market for a while and now as well. Taking a look at the status of real estate agents in California, you can see a little pause in growth in 2020 due to the pandemic, but it rebounded soon after and is definitely on a rise now. This graph is showing house inventory um, of California. You see both the seasonal cycles and overall decrease in inventory as well. In 2020, the level of inventory did not build up like other cycles in the past years and remained at the low level. Now, the housing inventory in California is very tight, and one of the reasons could be the, the impact of COVID. New homes were not built for a while because home building industries were hit so hard due to the pandemic. 30-year fixed mortgage rate is in the U.S. is remaining at 3.25% as of November 26. And according to this graph, the, the current mortgage rate is at one of the lowest points compared to the past years. This graph shows us the housing affordability index of California. Housing costs have been on a rise in California, which has impacted affordability. Now, only less than 25% of home buyers can afford to buy medium priced home in California. As mentioned before, California UII is very tight at this point. And analyzing from that, the current demand of housing in California is very high. According to the Zillow Home Value Index, 
the average home value in California is 717,854. It has been increasing constantly for years and rapidly from 2020. All the factors, including tight inventory, low mortgage rate, and high demand are impacting the home prices to keep increasing. So we have covered um, the current features of the California real estate market. And these are the main points we can think of regarding COVID-19 um, situation. Real estate market has both the seasonal cycles and economic shifts. Financial, social, political, and environmental factors impact the real estate market. Tight inventory and low mortgage rates are causing the rise in California housing demand and prices, which finally leads to low housing affordability. New housing demand has appeared during COVID, and there is a possibility of changes in business features due to the continuous pandemic situation. And Hian will continue to present on predictions part. Um, so we think that the pandemic has brought many changes to our lives and some changes may stay in places. Home prices have reached all time highs and have surpassed the peak that preceded the 2000 housing crash so there there are some worries that that, uh, that there might be another housing bubble the housing prices has increased at the fastest pace since 2006 with 14 percent year-to-year increase or the median sale price for a previously owned single family home is higher than that of the new constructions which means that buyers rush to buy homes um, no matter what it is like um, any house, it's any house on the market. Um, <clears throat> however, um, unlike the early 2000s, the mortgage underwriting standards have not dropped and we are not overbuilding houses related to the underlying demographic demand. So uh, during the 2000s era where constructors rushed to build new homes to meet the increasingly high in demand, there's a pullback from construction right now after the COVID-19 situation, so uh, which eventually might lead to diminished diminish inventory instead of um, a lot of uh, abandoned housing like the 2008 uh, period. So um, currently the long-term treasury bond yields have also increased and mortgage rates will adjust gradually with the treasuries. So once the Federal Reserve stop buying securities, home prices will drop within a few years. So, um, so we predict that the home prices is going to decrease um, in the future. <clears throat> so um, also there might not be another housing bubble for some several reasons. First, today's increase can be attributed to national supply uh, shortage. <clears throat> so it's not because it's not rooted from the supply mortgage, but it was rooted from the supply shortage and economical driven factors, such as the um, growth in uh, GDP and the decline in unemployment rate. So all of those can contribute to the increase in housing and housing price. I think, yeah. um, also, um, since the pandemic hit, remote work became the norm. So families have moved to the, some families have moved to the suburbs for more space. So uh, we are not certain whether or not remote uh, work will stay permanent. So, um, but if it's not permanent, definitely people are gonna come back to uh, their work or they are gonna move based on their jobs. So there will be a lot of demographic adjust, uh, adjustments um, as well as uh, we predict that interest rates might rise and 
the Federal Reserve will stop purchasing securities, as I mentioned before. So that's our prediction. And now, um, Jung is going to talk about the main takeaways of our presentation. Okay, so we have learned that the um, that there are multiple layers and factors involved when it comes to the real estate market, whether they are political issues, market crashes, or even a pandemic. Those factors cannot be predicted and the future is full of uncertainties. But one thing we know for certain is that housing is an essential product and the demand for it will always exist. Here are the resources and this is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. Excellent job. Stop the share here. Stop share. Great job, everyone. Okay. Let me close this out.